All right, guys, here it is. My theory of diminishing subjective well-being. And what this is, is really a concept that I've had in my head for a couple months, but was missing a few pieces to really speak about it intelligently until Christmas happened. And really, as a definition I wrote up here is, most of us establish a slowly diminishing baseline of normalcy that just keeps getting worse over time. So what I mean by that is, we tell ourselves that we feel normal with our current routine habits and eating patterns, but what's really happening is those three things, we are slowly declining over time, even though our perception of where we are remains the same. So over here I have your objective well-being, which can be measured objectively through things like your blood work, energy levels, and um, other, other non-subjective things, I guess. On the bottom here, I have age. And what we see here is when you're younger, right, you're not in control of your actions for the most part as your parents are controlling things. So you're getting most square meals a day, you have bedtimes, and your activity levels are higher because maybe you play a couple sports, right? So you operate really high for a while. And then right at around age 18, you become in control of your actions. So typically diet really tanks, sleep really tanks, and usually an introduction of alcohol, cigarettes, and or drugs, and you start dropping off pretty good. And then that drop off is pretty hard until age 21, 22, where you're kind of getting out of college and you have a job and things kind of level out or taper at a less steep rate as you get some semblance of control over your life again. The next big spot here I have is around the 26 to 27 mark. Typically people are getting married at that age, they are starting families and the priority on your health, nutrition and activity levels gets put on a back burner so things accelerate. Again, another big mark here I have is 30. 30 is typically where people kind of, uh, I don't want to use the word give up, but settle into a different aspect of life where things like playing sports, going to the gym, prioritizing nutrition, just are on heavily on the back burner. And that's kind of the rate that things taper off of until you are later in age. So a couple things that I have primarily, this derives from a poor diet, uh, sedentary lifestyle, and increasingly sedentary lifestyle the deeper you get into age and choice of habits. So really sleep, um, any alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, things of that choice, and then other kind of negative lifestyle impacts could be mindset stuff, um, poor relationships, things like that. So what I have here is this pizza, beer, wings, etc. So when you talk to people about their diet and improving their diet, something people say is, well, I could never give up pizza. I could never give up beer, I could never give up wings. And the reason why, and not that you really need to give up those things forever or all the time, but you're not gonna be doing them weekly or daily, is the source of satisfaction. Because people derive so much source of satisfaction from things like pizza, beer, and wings, and this is why. Their subjective level of well-being is down here, right? So when they have those things, it improves their source of satisfaction. What I am saying, the argument I am making is when your diet is a priority, when you're exercising regularly, when you have other really positive, healthy lifestyle aspects, you are operating up here. And then what happens is when you do have things like a pizza night or you binge or go drinking or whatever, it brings down your subjective level of well-being. So that is the argument that I make for the diminishing, the theory of the diminishing subjective well-being is when your perception slowly diminishes over time, you latch on to not necessarily unhealthy things, but things that bring you a source of satisfaction and think that you can't do without them. The reason you think you can't do without them is because it temporarily increases your level of subjective well-being, but when those habits are on a healthier note, what happens is those actions actually bring down temporarily your subjective level of well-being.